Hello my friends, I'm glad to see you made it. We are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He's alive. Today my friends, uh, we're going to go through, start going through the book of Hebrews. So, uh, chapters 1 and on down through the line and... You know, that's the thing I, I want everybody to understand uh, of how no different than in Moses' day, Adam and Eve's day, or, or our day today, uh, the same deception is going across the world. And, and even right now today in, in our world and in our everyday life, uh, we're all in the process of being deceived and being worked over by, by the Satan's deception. And, and so, in the book of Hebrews, you know, nobody really knows who wrote the book of Hebrews. A lot of people say Paul wrote it. Uh, they're, they're, they're not real sure. But I, I, I got to say, when I study it and look at it and all that, I, I truly believe whoever wrote the book of Hebrews either read the, the, the book of Revelation or, or wrote the book of Revelation as well. So, so I, I would say John uh, most likely either wrote this or, or knew the guy that, or the guy that wrote this knew John, uh, the writer of, of Revelation. Because this is all here to testify uh, what exactly happened and what's going on here in the flesh world. And the book of Revelation is testifies to everything this says there in the spirit world. And John uh, uh, verifies that in the first letter or epistle of John. Both these things being true, uh, like three witnesses. God does everything in, in two uh, or more witnesses, two and three witnesses. Same for us today, you know, that's the thing, is when we get outside of God, when, when we're not believing in God or, or Jesus Christ, that, that's when the world and things become a chaos. And, and I know if you followed anywhere along through my videos, I speak a, a lot about insurance, insurance companies and that, and, and everybody, I get it all the time, that, that. I'm totally crazy. I'm totally nuts that that the insurance company and insurance has nothing to do with, with, with the mark of the beast, its name or its image. And I, I'm more convinced today, <laughs> even after reading, going through the book of Hebrews and, and all that, that, that it is true, that that is it. And, and, be, and what it is, it is the death and, and the process of death. Nobody truly wants to acknowledge that in their life. They don't want to acknowledge it. And because they don't want to acknowledge it, they're afraid of it. And so the world or the devil uses our fear of something we can't overcome to, to, to mold us, shape us, to, to move us into a direction he truly wants us to go and that is to be master over our lives or to be God alright and God gives life everything has life and it was devil who wanted to destroy what God had made you know even though God gave the command don't eat from the uh, forbidden tree that tree of knowledge it, the devil knew exactly all of God's words, and Adam and Eve knew all of God's words. Everybody knew what it was, but it was the devil who wanted to tempt them into destroying what God had made. By doing that, he would be able to claim he, he was greater than God, because God made all things, and, and, and he destroyed it. And then be able to have the, the, you know, great idea or pride to say he, he was greater than God, the creator. And, and that's the thing where we come to find out that, that no, in the end, that, that God's word reigns supreme over all of it. 
Now, Jesus being God and of God and Moses being Moses, a man, was given instructions. And whether those instructions came from God or, or, or from the devil, and that's the thing which we come to find out that I'm telling you he was deceived by the devil and this is where that deception came in. Okay, the devil brings rules that, that say this is holy. Okay, and so he puts in place these rules that are 100% impossible for a man to follow or be able to fulfill or complete. Impossible. And so in that impossibility of a man to be able to do that, that creates a state of holiness, something we can't do. And there that's like a, a holy, right? And that's what the devil wanted to, to prove, try and prove to us men that, that we were, were to bow down to, to him, basically. And that's what he was trying to create. It was okay when, when, when you cannot fulfill these things, well, you, you bow down to me and, and ask for my grace and, and forgiveness, and, and I'll allow you to, to live a little while longer, you know, and, and so Jesus comes to, to correct all that, and how Jesus comes to correct all that is by fulfilling all those words. So, so by fulfilling all of it, by fulfilling all of it, doing exactly what a man or, or, or the people or the world could not do, he proved to himself, okay, here's the writing, here's the words, the, the, the deception and, and everything that, that says you couldn't do it. So, so I come, become God becomes a man and, and fulfills all that. And now we agree and say, yeah, only holiness can, can fulfill all these things. So that's got to be God. And then Jesus says, okay, now that you agree that only God or, or something of great holiness could fulfill all that. Now, has fulfilled all that. So, so now the word, their law, and the deception all says that, that Jesus is the holy God. Now, in that, the reason Jesus becomes a man like us is so that the, the word that says no man could ever do this, because that was what the devil wanted to do, is for a man to bow to an angel. Something that was insuperior to even a man. Angels are insuperior to men. Even though for a little while, like Jesus, he, he comes and, and makes himself below the angels, below the angels, becomes a man, to, to prove to the angels, the devil and the de this deceiver, how much uh, God loved his son, his son, his creation, his only begotten. And so Jesus, being that man, and then God, and then we say, okay, Jesus is the holy representation of God. Perfect, 100% reflection of God's glory. Perfect. In, in the brightness of God's glory, Jesus is the perfect representation of that being shown through a, a man. So that... So that, that, that you could see here in this world exactly how much God loved His one only Son, the one that come from His bosom, you know. This is a one Son of twelve, my favorite of the family. This is the only one, and I love this only one uh, with all my heart, might, and soul. Because there is nothing else to love with all my heart, might, and soul but this one. And I love it with everything I have. To show what that looks like. And so when Jesus dies at the crucifixion and then is roused back to life, or to show the world and everything that, that 
in reality, death has no hold on a man. On a man. See, Jesus didn't just rise in spirit, but in, in flesh and body, and, and even demonstrates to the men of the world who were made of flesh and blood, and that's the thing, that the children of God were, are, were made of flesh and blood. So Jesus becomes a, a flesh and blood, and, and the holiness of, of that any piece of flesh and blood could be, by the word of the angels, or the deceptor, deceiver, because he's made it impossible for a man to be this, so that man would always bow down to him. Right? And this is why all men will die, too. So that devil could, could be prince uh, of this world. Because in this world, the, the, the greatest master of this world, the one thing that, that nothing can overcome is death itself. So he wants to be the master of that because he brought death in, right? So, so he, he makes a rule... To, to abuse and hurt and to violate that which he, he knows is truth. The truth is one day his deception will come to light. It will be known that, that it was a deception. Right? So, so God shows the world how much he loved Jesus when he rises him to, to the life, a man. Right? So that the deception could could be taken away, and, and, and then that's the the love of God it is Jesus Christ in, in the flesh, and, and so Moses, not understanding it all, was was faithful with everything he was given. Everything that Moses was given, Moses followed through faithfully. And it kept the house clean. It kept the house clean. But because Moses and the descendants of Moses followed that stuff so faithfully, they were able to establish and prove to the world that literally no one could fulfill these things other than God. And that was the thing, keeping the house clean, keeping it. So, so when Jesus come to fulfill it, we could all agree that, that only God could do this. Right? And this is what all like my videos and everything, you know, what is love? What is love? Right? And the love of God is Jesus Christ in the flesh. And... And that's the thing. Jesus Christ says to us all, uh, you, you, your, your eyes will be opened, your, your, your heart will come to rest when you come to understand and believe that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of I am. I am that I am. Where does my self-worth come from? And this is what it comes down to. What is the great deception that was plaguing the world from the beginning of time all the way to, to today? Uh, uh, where is my, 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 your, our self-worth come from? I am that I am. Here I am, worthy to be praised. And Jesus says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And when you can praise that, not be ashamed of that. See, so see, he says, and that's why I say here, right in the opening two chapters, what we see there in the book of Revelations, that all comes to fulfillment as he says to John, stand up, my brother, my, my equal. All right, it was the angels who were made by God to bow down to men. Not men bow down to angels. So where does my self-worth come from? 
I am that I am. Here I am worthy to be praised. And uh, 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 there's you got the deer, and we got the elk, and we got the buffalo, and we got the moose, and we got the birds of the air, and they all are in agreement that they fully believe that. They do. You know how I know they do? Because they, monkeys, gorillas, orangutans, all of it, don't own insurance. In fact, there's not even a thought in their mind if they missed the insurance payment, they would even question their existence or, or their tomorrow. So, so what is it about the insurance that, that is, what does it do? It creates a value. Now, now what if our time had a value? What if everything we saw had a value, and what if the value was as simple as I am that I am, and here I am, worthy to be praised. Now, now Jesus says here, I'll be a little lower than the angels for a while, so that when all the angels and the deception and the truth comes out, they will know exactly how much I love you when I bow down to your feet. Right? And we see there the 24 elders bow down to the Son of God's feet. Because the, 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 every time everybody said, Praise the Lord! All the elders bow down to the Lamb's feet. And, and so all the world and all creation would know how much I loved my Son. My son, the only son, and, and, and Jesus Christ sits there and he says, disciples gather around and he says, let me wash your feet. Let me show Satan, the law, and the great deception, how much God loves his son, and, and, and Jesus Christ says to all the disciples, let me wash your feet, and Peter says, no. And, and Jesus says, well, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no place with me. Peter says, wash all my body. Jesus says, I only need to wash your feet. I only need to wash your feet so Satan and all the angels know how much God loves you when I do this for you. But, but you are God. You, you are <coughs> the author of all life. And he's saying, yeah. And you are my Son. See, the mystery hidden from creation is Jesus Christ lives in you. He doesn't live in a statue or pictures or movies, but, but in you and, and the animals and our pets and, and everything, they all agree with God that we are worthy to be praised, and why would anything, what would make me not believe that? And it's called the Antichrist. The Antichrist cannot, will not believe that. And it is he who puts a, a, a value on everything. Now, now my time has value. My, my why? Because he knows our time is short here. And so he knows it's limited. His power. So he tries to enforce his power to the fullness that he can. And this is what he wants you to do is not believe that. Now doubt 
that. Everybody on earth is saved except for you. And isn't it amazing how that is like a great topic? And that's the great warning of everybody. If we're going to believe, you know, God doesn't exist because I follow these rules. God exists. God doesn't exist because I pray. No, God exists. God exists. Whether I believe it or don't believe it doesn't make God exist. He, he still exists. And if it's He who says we have the right to live with the same respect and dignity that the, that the, that the gorillas and, and the monkeys and the orangutans and the deer and the elk. If we had to have that same right, that same respect, that same authority, not, not, not even the same, but, but the authority of, of God's Son. Are we not have the authority and the faith to believe I am worthy to be praised? I am worthy to live here? And I don't have to prove I, I, I have that right. A, a deer doesn't have to prove he has that right, you know. He doesn't have to build a, a home and a house and everything and say, this is my home and my house. And Satan says, well, wonderful. What a beautiful home and your house. Uh, now pay me for the value of it. The, the value. Everything has a value. My time has a value. Everything's got a value. But my existence has no value. You know, I've seen it and met a lot of people who love to read the Bible and all about the Bible and everything. And if I don't just stay right here focused in the Bible, in the Word of God, God just might stop existing. But, but, but maybe, what, what would happen if I stopped making the insurance payment? Would I stop existing? What if I stopped going to work for the devil and the world and the system? Would, would I stop existing? Right? The, the, the monkeys, they'll build houses and villages and cities. They, they don't even hire a, a town mayor. How do, they, how do they live? How have they been living and surviving on this earth? for millions of years right with us, yet, yet never once built a city and, and never once questioned their existence. How, how did they do that? And, and, and how do we do that? How do we put a value of my ability to, to receive love, to receive care, come from a, a, a literally a piece of paper? piece of, of paper. Sometimes we, we, we believe in the, in the authority of that paper uh, above the authority that God's given us. You know, this, this isn't a Christian thing. I don't have to have a set of beliefs, a set of rules. I don't have to go to church to make God exist. What would I got to do? God exists. And if I want peace in this world, if I want to be able to live in this world without fear... I, I could agree with them. Just agree with them is all. Isn't that what the animals do? The, 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 the monkeys, the gorillas, and the orangutans, don't they just agree with God? That they not one of them pays insurance payment. And, and they're still here. Not one of them pays taxes, and, and they're still here. And, and you know what? That they don't even, they don't even, aren't even worried if you're mad at them if they don't do it. They don't, they don't even get mad if if you if you got mad at a gorilla for not paying his taxes. He doesn't get, he doesn't get mad. In fact, we we know it would be such a worse worth 
worthless waste of time to, to even bother him. We don't even bother him. Now, 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 why would we ever think that, that we should put that same burden on each other? Why don't we hold the dear to the burden of taxation? Why don't we hold the dear to the burdens uh, 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 of an insurance payment? How come, how come when my pet dog gets ran over by the dog, by, by a car, I, 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 I help my dog? And, and I don't even ask him to pay for the insurance payment. I don't even make him pay the co-payment. I, I just willingly take my, 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 my ran over dog to, to the bat. And I do that out of the goodness of my heart. Because I love my pet, my animal. But, but, but when it comes to another human being, we hold, we hold each other to a completely different standard. Now, now what, if we, what if we agreed with Jesus Christ and, and we threw the measure away? Maybe they don't even measure each other. Maybe they don't judge each other. Maybe they don't have to prove their existence or their right to have this existence with a measure. See, see value is a measure. Anything. If I, I want to put a, a value on my time, I, I'm pulling out a tape measure and saying that this is how much time it's valued. You know, I, I gotta, it's a measure. And I start to value things, a value. How do I evaluate my existence? And, and, and God says, this is, this is exactly how Jesus Christ evaluated his existence. And, and this is the gift he gives to you. As, this is the gift he gives to you as we watch him rise to life in body. I am that I am. Here I am, worthy to be praised. Right. And they ask him, well, very interesting, pretty cool thought, you know, but, but in the end, do, who, who do we pay taxes to? Should we be paying taxes to Caesar or to the church or who do we pay taxes to? I mean, come on, uh, uh, yeah. God, but, but in the end, uh, we still have to live in this world, and in this world, it says everything is valued. So, well, in the only time Jesus said God ever asked for anything, and he gives it back, let me see the coin. And he says, look at the coin, well, whose face is on the coin? And today, whose face is on that coin? Whose name is on that coin? And it says, in God, we trust on that. No, no, no. No. Give to, to Satan. What, what is Satan? That, 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 that false value? And when you can give it up and give to God what is God's, God's authority. Give to God the authority which... God has given to us the, the right to believe in that. And, and you say, what, what right do you have to believe in that? And Jesus says, this is the right. Hanging on the cross and, and he's dying. He says, this is the right you have to believe in that. You don't even have to fear death. And if I don't have to fear death, why, what would ever motivate me to fear a missed insurance payment? Or, 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 or that. What would make me think that my value, my existence depended on, on making that payment? Knowing. Knowing that, that I can make that payment every month for 20 years and miss one payment and lose it all. Lose it all. All my value, all my faith, all my hope. I, 
I mean, it's it's real devastating to to fifteen family members when, when mom's been paying in and paying in and paying in, and then all of a sudden mom gets sick and get loses job, and then now doesn't pay in, and no, no, now I need to use it. You can't use it. You you're too sick. In fact, you've lost your value. Your, your value depended on, on your ability to keep feeling my empty hole. That, that's what, and now that, that now that you found out that, that this hole is so empty, you, you are left without faith. You, you're left with, with 15 family members so angry, so upset, so frustrated, so, so pissed off that they're ready to destroy aunts, uncles, brothers, and sisters. Because the, 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 the reality that, that our value is not based upon Paperwork. Uh, uh, the reality is our value is based upon God's living word. Right? So we'll all die. So yet it is, it is the fear of the death. The devil is able to, to stand here and, and, and drive you into a place of sh total shame. A monkey's not ashamed to, to be a monkey, but boy, every human being is like almost ashamed to be a human being. And in fact, we, we now come up with, with stuff called plastic surgery. Right? I don't even love my face. I, I gotta go get me a Rubbermaid face. And the sad part is, is you look just like a monkey. And boy, look how, how, how he... he isn't ashamed to look like you. <laughs> and we're all looking at you going, wow, which clan did you come from? <laughs> and, and, but, but what is it? What is that deception? What's creating the shame? What's creating the drive? Man, I, I just had this talk with my, with my friend. And, oh, about living in a, in a completely self-sustained home. Whether it was like a quarter acre or a half acre, and him, of course, oh, I need a hundred acres. And <laughs> yeah, okay, well, whatever. But well, what's keeping us from from being a part of that? And, and uh, well, I, I gotta work. Well, gotta pay the bills. And well, what happens if we stopped? What what if we stopped? What would happen? And huh? My, my fear says I'd probably go to jail. I don't know. Because I'm so locked in prison. I'm so under the, the bondage of slavery, the fear of death, the fear of being out of control. I, I, what, what, you mean that would take away all of my control? It would take away my value. I wouldn't be able to prove to anybody no longer that. I belonged here. That I had a value, and my value came and is coming from the things that are perishing and, and passing away. And, and when the realization of it's like reality, it's heartbreaking. It's like a man who built all his faith and put it upon the sand. And when that storm came, Washed them away. Devastating. Devastating. You know, that's that's the thing. <coughs> Moses, the law. Let me <laughs> let me let me put into place and it doesn't matter if it's biblical or from the Bible or it's this this Obamacare law, that this law which enslaves the human being. To, to a, a fictitious thing, you know, of creating this worth 
of human value outside of the very thing that brings all life to existence, the very value of God's spoken word. I am that I am. Here I am, worthy to be praised. And the only things, the only one, the only people that, that don't believe that is the Antichrist and its seed. Period. So you see, when God, Jesus Christ, becomes a man, he, he didn't just become a, a Jewish man, he became a human man. A, human being. This is about all human beings. And the only person would ever try to defy the almighty authority of God's word would be the Antichrist. This is about all human beings. This isn't religious. This isn't about religious stuff. This is, Jesus atones for all the sin. All the sin. And, and human beings. No human being. It's ever been made by God to, to spend life in an eternal fire that has been made and reserved for the angels that broke out of their authority that tried to make a man, a human being, bow down to an angel. Because it has always been God who made man, Adam, to be his son. It made in his image. Satan's not made in God's image. But man was. Why would man, who's made in God's image, who are sons of God, ever think they were unworthy to, to exist in this world? Because of God's authority. Because of your father's authority. What would, what would make you think anything different than that? And same with Moses. This law comes in that, that you cannot perform. Okay, now we have this insurance thing in, this stuff that you cannot perform. You, you cannot fulfill it. We we're going to pay somebody else to be a good neighbor and... If, and that's the thing, if you felt like you needed to tax something, if you felt like you needed to put a worth on or a value on something, then the value should be this, that all life, everybody who eats food, eats food, you, you, you then tax the food, because the, in reality it's the food that kills us. The food gives us heart disease. The, the food gives us cancer. The, the food destroys our bodies each and every day. It's not a question of whether we're going to get sick. We are going to get sick because we are children of God. And the voice of God is have life. And the voice of God said, all those who are deceived tried to create their uh, value outside of God's word. Adam and Eve were already sons of God. They were already created eternal. They already had everything God had given them. But it was Satan who came to trick them and take it away. Oh, you want to be like God? You're already like God. Oh, you want to be like God? You didn't believe it. And that's the thing today. You know, got this insurance thing, you, 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 you can't measure up. I, I, no matter how many times I put in, in, in the end, I never get nothing out. It's like, like, like Jesus says, the, the fulfillment of one of the prophecies was they gambled over his garments. An insurance company is gambling all over the lives and the garments of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what it is. Go to the poker place there at the casino and it's no different. I'm going to gamble. I'm betting that you will not get sick before you can stop paying me. 
Because when you stop paying me, I won the gamble. And now I no longer have to take care of you. Well, it's impossible to pay when I'm sick in bed. Impossible. But all my worth, all my life is dependent on my work, my week, 40 hours, 80, 60 hours a week, just to make ends meet. Because God forbid, what would happen to my existence if I missed that payment? And if we tax the food where everybody who ate food deserved the care, Everybody who was deceived by Satan deserved the care. Everybody who seen death, right? Because we were deceived, we, we died. Jesus come to die to rob Satan of his power by saying, all men made of flesh and of blood will be redeemed. All men. That's why we don't want to argue Christians, Muslims, any of that. This is a God thing. God is so much greater, so much bigger. So you see, when Jesus says the parable of the seeds going out, we always say, oh, look at all the weeds in our church. Well, you're so small-minded. It's the world. The world, not, 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 not in churches. The world is being deceived. Even Christians are being deceived by, by thinking that this, you're not saved. You have to bow down. You have to reform to Moses' law. You have to do something to be transformed. And God says, you are mine. Mine. And the day you'll be transformed is when Satan's word has been fulfilled. When, when, when the power, this is the greatest power Satan could do was bring death, but it was God who brought life and, and the tricks on Satan because it's a, a life without end. Without end. In other words, like pulling off my clothes, I'm just going to step right out of this cloak, of this coat, and walk right into another. Like buying a new car, man. You just. Dump one at the junkyard and, and get in the Mercedes and head off. Just like that. And, and that's the thing, is how Jesus comes to show how God's word is ultimately supreme. It was God who said, if you disobey, you will die. But it was also God who breathed his spirit into Adam and Eve. Life it, into you and me. I chose, had no more power over saying I, I want to be a human being th 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 than King Kong had over becoming a gorilla. No, no, no. No, di no, no, no. No difference. The difference is, it, this is the only difference, guys. The only difference, we know our Father. We have wisdom. They don't. That's the difference. Satan, when we were said, our eyes were open, and we know the difference between right and wrong. We know the difference between good and evil. And so that is a constant battle for us and our grills and they don't know the difference between right and wrong all they know is that they are worthy to be praised and that's all they know they were deceived but but man doesn't seem to know that doesn't seem to be able to grasp that doesn't seem to be understand that and why because you're in the midst of being deceived you're in the process of it. You're in the middle of it. You're under the judgment of God. Right now. And the only way to escape the judgment of God is to become likened unto a little child, likened unto the deer, likened unto the gorillas and the apes and the monkeys and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Right? 
to see everything is dying, but only those things die to, to replenish life. You know, that, that was the thing. Once death came into the world, the only way Satan could be prince of this world is by feeding you the life of another animal which would sustain you for one more day so he could abuse you again. And think about it. If you had a baby, I gave birth to a brand new one day old baby. How many days could I go without feeding that baby before it literally died? Not very long. And where is it going to get its food and its nourishment from? Mother. Who gets its food and nourishment from the, 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 the death of a flesh of, of another animal? The death of, of an animal. A death of something. Even the grapes squeeze out blood and, and we drink the blood of grapes. The death of something to sustain us because if we don't, it will die probably within a, a day or so. And that's where God, the, the, the death of an animal cannot suffice. It, it cannot be the sacrifice. No, the, 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 the sacrifice. That's what God said. No. I know you, you really wished you could believe that the, my word isn't supreme. And, and so the ultimate sacrifice is the blood of Jesus Christ. When our bodies, when our, the blood, Jesus Christ lives in me, the, the only sacrifice God will accept is the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ. And when His word has been fulfilled, when I said you will surely die, and when you die, the, the, the good news is, is God's, because it's God's word, and because God is God, supreme over Satan, he puts you just right into a new clothing. Adam and Eve were covered in leaves and then skins. Joseph had a coat of many colors, and look how many times Joseph changes coats. It's going to step from one coat to the next coat. And if this is the, I have nothing left after that. The only thing left that Satan has to bring fear into our life, division into our life. That's what divides the people. The only thing that could. What if, what if I believed in Jesus Christ, God, the Father, and His love for His Son was truth? What if I believed that? I, I, I guess there's nothing left. I mean, literally, there's nothing left to fear. I don't have to fear, man. I don't even have to fear the government or the insurance companies, the bombs, the death. I don't have nothing left to fear. What can man do to me when God is for me? Who, with the angels, what animals, what, what in God's word has he ever deemed? My son. Today. I have made you my son. Right? He says that to you. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why no other gospel, none, other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, is a false gospel. There's only one voice. Human beings can, can obey. Right? Moses, knowing God, could not never be like God. Jesus, being a man, could never be like a man. Yet, the two are one. The two are one. 
John. John. Stand up. My brother. Right? We all worship God here. We're all equal. We all believe in I am that I am. Here I am. Worthy. To be praised. And everybody believes that. Hey, there's, there's no murderers here. That there's no sexual immorality here. That there's nothing here but the human beings God made who all believe. I am that I am. Here I am, worthy to be praised. And God says to all the angels, I will show you how much I love my son. When I bow down to his feet. And Jesus again, right? Washes the feet of the disciples. If I can forgive your walk, if I can forgive your journey, if I can forgive you for being deceived, what left what else is left? Right? Nothing. You know what? why I pay insurance payment? Because I can't love my neighbor as though I love myself. There's only one way I can believe those words. The love of God lives in Jesus Christ who lives in the flesh. See you next time.